We've been here for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We've had unbelievable speakers, phenomenal presentations, brilliant research. It's absolutely been amazing. But there was one thing that one speaker said that was more powerful than anything anyone else said. <clears throat> what happened was Helen Caldecott was talking. She spoke twice. It was very nice, very, you know, very intense information. But somewhere in, towards the end of one of her speeches, she just said, oh, yeah, if we have a nuclear war with um, Russia, what will happen is a, a you know, half hour, they send it to us, then we send it to here. It lands, it goes you know, five miles down, it kills everyone, it burns everyone within 100 miles, then it sends wind out and everyone else becomes a human target that goes, you know, and everyone in 300 miles is burned alive, everyone else gets radiation poisoning, and it was the most graphic, horrifying thing that was like stunning and left an impression on my mind that, okay, I definitely don't want nuclear war. I get it. You don't have to tell me again. <laughs> Enough already. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't like leave it to you and make it like, it's not that bad if you're, she made it like it's an all out, the most horrific thing ever. So I'd like for each of you to wrap up with, for the people who, you know, some people are interested in the cholesterol debate, some are not. Again, for people who don't care about the environment, they don't care about the animals, they don't care about anyone's philosophy or your philosophy. They just want to know for them why it's such a big deal. Their dad lived to 78. They have an uncle who lived to 84. Why shouldn't they eat animal products? What specifically is going to happen to them? What, you know, what's going to happen? And I know a girl who's 49 and went blind in one of her eyes. It was horrible. I didn't understand that. She didn't understand that. She had diabetes. So what's going to happen to people? A lot of people are thinking, yeah, you're a vegan. I'm not a vegan, but what's the difference? It all ends up the same. So what are you saying is in it? Like what, you know, people are saying, if I eat chicken, fish, beef, and dairy, what's going to happen? So what is going to happen to people that should make them care in terms of their own health about if they continue eating animal products versus not? And I'd like to hear from each of you. Okay, I'll start and we'll go down the road. You will definitely have a much higher chance of contracting cancer. Anna Maria the other day showed you the statistics, how they're growing. You will absolutely have more heart attacks and strokes, cardiovascular disease. You will absolutely have more type 2 diabetes. You will absolutely have more propensity to multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, ALS, dementia, and every single disorder, you'll have a much higher possibility of contracting that. That's number one. Even if you don't like yourself and you're totally unconscious, as I was at one point in my life, <laughs> We have, most of us have children, and we have grandchildren. So if you are a self-saboteur, the one place I may be able to touch you is in the heart for the future generations. Uh, this lifestyle that you are consuming now, thinking it's perfectly fine, and maybe you haven't yet contracted the disease, I assure you, you will. Um, let's at least try to make the planet a livable place for our children and the next generation. And the last thing I'm going to say to you about this is that everyone has a possibility to gain back their humanity again. And it's inside of you. When you were a little girl and you were born a little boy, you were completely passionate and compassionate. You loved and all you wanted is love. All you wanted to do was share love. And slowly but surely, life chipped away at you. And rather than you standing strong and remembering how you felt that you were capable of anything, that you had endless potential, you became part of the problem. And today, there are solutions, and they're not always solutions you would choose. I hated the day I became a vegan, but I didn't, because intellectually I knew it was right. As time passed, that's all I wanted to do. So take the first step, even if you don't like yourself enough to do it. <laughs> the University of Chicago used some baboons in a special experiment. They fed these baboons a typical university hospital diet. And after 19 months, the baboons died of massive heart attacks. When they looked at the heart attack uh, results, when they looked at the, uh, the anatomical structures, 
Then notice that the heart attack of the animals were not dissimilar to what you see in human heart attacks. So they began to uh, highlight the idea that a typical Western diet that is found in hospitals very well is not in your best interest. It's for that reason that in our program, we always tell our participants, don't stay at the hospital longer than 19 months. It's a dangerous place. <laughs> you become a baboon. <laughs> but you see, the concept here is that there's a narrowing taking place in the major arteries of the human body. And this is the major foundational pathology that leads to many other diseases that express themselves in different organs. For instance, if you have this narrowing process called atherosclerosis affecting your coronary arteries, then you have to worry about the possibility of a shutting down of the coronary vessels and you have a heart attack. If it happens to the cerebral vessels in the brain, then you have to worry about strokes. You have to worry about TIAs, small strokes. You have to worry about cognitive function loss. You have to be thinking about uh, hearing diminishment. When it affects the eyes, you have small vessels there. And when they become narrowed down, they no longer function as well. You have to worry about retinopathies. You have to worry about vision loss. You have to worry about macular degeneration. When it goes down, to the level of the kidneys, and you have a narrowing of the arteries, the kidney vessels, then you have to be concerned about high blood pressure. If you have the arteries to the spine that feeds the spine with proper oxygenated blood and nutrition-rich blood, when you're shutting them down, you diminish their function. They're no longer optimally functioning. Then you have to worry about a diminishment of the, of the, um, uh, the discs that you have spacing the various vertebrae. If it goes down further in the male, and now you affect the penile arteries, and they become narrowed down with the buildup of cholesterol and calcium and fats inside, then you have to worry about ED, ED which many people think you stands start for with that one. <laughs> which many people think stands for early death. <laughs> it may be. <laughs> <laughs> when it goes further down to the legs, then you have to worry about claudication. When it goes further down, you have to worry about gangrene, commonly found in diabetes. So what I'm saying is that um, diet has a very powerful effect, and if for nothing else, it affects powerfully the circulatory system. You have 60,000 miles. Perfect health largely depends on perfect circulation. You got it. That was pretty graphic. Mm. Um, you know, there's an acid test to me, and, and you look around the world, look at the healthiest, longest living people on the planet. Um, the blue zones, for example, there are five known blue zones. Every single one of them consumes other two dietary things that they do. They all consume plant-based diets, and they all consume legumes. Now, none of them, except a small portion of one of those blue zones, is completely vegetarian. All of them consume little bits of animal, very little bits of animal products. So then you might wonder, well, then why vegan? Uh, and, and to me, the ethical and the ecological arguments are extremely important. I think why contribute to pain, suffering, and death in these, these beings that want to live when we don't have to? Not only do we not have to, it ends up hurting us. But there are actually two really important studies that have compared similar health-conscious non-vegetarians, lacto-ovo-vegetarians, semi-vegetarians, pesco-vegetarians, and vegans, and followed them for many years. And one is in the UK, this is called Epic Oxford, and the second is in North America, and this is called the Adventist Health Study Two. And these two studies, it's not just comparing your typical Western eater, it's comparing similar health-conscious meat eaters with similar health-conscious vegetarians, vegans, and so forth. And I'll tell you what they found. 
Vegetarians and vegans have a third less heart disease. They have 15 to 20 percent less cancer. They have about 50 percent less kidney disease. Vegans have 40 percent less cataracts. They, they have uh, less uh, GI disorders. Vegans have 75 percent less hypertension. Vegetarians, 55 percent less hypertension. And vegans have about 62 percent less diabetes. So if that doesn't do it, I don't know what does. <laughs> okay, these are very convincing <laughs> studies. And the bottom line is why do this to creatures when we don't have to? There are wonderful foods to consume. Sure. Very good. Very good. I just want to add that, you know, we're looking at a population of people that are inherently very unhealthy. Most of us haven't eaten a healthy diet since childhood. A lot of people in America go to middle age, develop high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, overweight. You know, most of our population, the vast majority, 85% is overweight. In other words, what I'm saying right now is that it's not good enough for these people, it's not good enough for our population to eat a diet that's a little bit better or moderately better because they've already, they're already pretty sickly and going to suffer from these serious diseases if we don't do something pretty aggressive to reverse the degenerative changes that have already occurred in their bodies, meaning your bodies. In other words, it's not good enough to just make moderate changes and to make improvements. You really have to move towards nutritional excellence to be afforded the opportunity for modern nutritional studies and modern, the, modern, the availability of modern nutritional science to live a long, healthy life and not have cancer and not have, get demented and not have a hemorrhagic or embolic stroke. The point is we have this unique opportunity in human history because nutritional science has advanced that far. Mm. And you have to move that animal product off your plate so you have room to eat sufficiently of the high nutrient plant foods, <laughs> right, to be able to protect yourself against these diseases that are really seriously going to hurt us. You know? So we have to really rethink what we're doing, and we have to make radical changes in the way we eat, because then we get radical benefits. Mm, yes. You don't get radical benefits from moderate changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those are worth it. Well, my colleagues have eloquently discuss the health benefits of a vegan diet. So I'm going to close with a, another kind of question, which is longevity for what? <laughs> what is our life about and what are we doing? Kind of an interesting question. And so from that perspective, to me, from a spiritual perspective, a vegan diet is the most appropriate diet. Yes, it feeds the hungry, it prevents animal cruelty, it protects the ecology, it makes us healthy, that's pretty obvious, right? But more than that, if you look at the great traditions, except one, there is no spilling of blood. And if we begin to understand the subtleties of the human spirit, spiritual levels and the subtle energetic channels, when we fill them with death, it blocks our spiritual unfoldment. And if we are more than just animals here, we may have a mission, which is to wake up. And what we eat affects our consciousness, our consciousness affects our mind, and our mind affects our actions. There's a connection, okay? And so what we eat is key for the evolution of the human species, for the physical evolution, but also the spiritual evolution. And a vegan, plant-based diet is best for the spiritual evolution of the planet, as well as the ethical evolution, as well as the physical ev evolution. So when we take the whole picture from that perspective, and we question, what is our purpose in life? Which, from my point of view, is to know the divine, to dance with the divine, then we want to eat in a way that helps us become superconductors of the divine. And death, meat, fish, chicken, and dairy, block those channels and keep us from being our fullest human potential. And from my point of view, reach the awareness of why we were put on the planet to begin mm, with. Very good. Oh. <laughs>